안녕하십니까? 니콜라스입니다. This language is more popular than Java and that Python. It's a language that just by understanding it will help you so much when building a web-related project. Also, it's a great on the resume and it could save you so much on a technical interview. The crazy part is that it's not even a programming language. This language that I'm talking about is SQL. Yes, SQL is more popular than Java and the Python and the mind-blowing thing is that some full-stack developers have never ever ever written a single line of SQL code. Yes, sir? SQL means a structured query language. It is a language specifically designed to talk to databases. As you know, almost everything needs a database. Databases are where we store our data. So we need to understand as developers how to actually talk to databases. This is when SQL comes in. There are two categories of databases, relational databases and non-relational databases, also known as SQL and non-SQL. On the SQL corner, we have stuff like MySQL, PostgreSQL, SQLite. And on the NoSQL corner, we have things like, like MongoDB, DynamoDB, and CouchDB. On this video, I'm not gonna make a comparison between NoSQL and SQL, but if you want that video, leave it in the comment because it's a really fun fight to have. SQL databases have been the default choice for most companies and most use cases. Most companies, governments, bank, enterprise, legacy systems run on SQL. That's why SQL is the industry standard. Orders, Captain? Now, how do SQL databases look like and how do they work? An SQL database looks just like an Excel document. So, a database has tables, an Excel document has sheets. A table has rows and columns, an Excel sheet has rows and columns. So, let's pretend that we have a database and that database has four columns. Those are ID, name, email, and age. And on the rows, let's say we have five users. Now let's take a look at some basic SQL commands. Select. Let's say that I want to get all the emails from the users on the table students. So what I'm gonna do is write select email from students. And that's it. As you can see, I am using select and from. Those two are SQL commands, but they are much just like English. I told you this is not a programming language, it's a query language, and it looks just like normal English. Now, let's try to get the emails from the users that are older than 21. So now we say select email from the table students where the age is more than 21. Again, this statement looks really, really much like normal English and we can just read it and understand what's going on. Now, let's get the ages of the users that have an email that ends with never.com. So now we're going to say select age from the table students where the email like ending with neighbor.com. In this case, we are using this percentage sign and that means that we are looking for something that ends with neighbor.com. What if we want to delete the student with the ID number two? All we have to do is say delete from the table students where the ID is the number two. What if you want to get the students that are between 15 and 18 years old? All we have to do is do select email from the table students where the age is between 15 and 18. As you can see, here we are using select from where between and and. These are all commands provided to us by SQL. And as you can see, it's so much like English, it's incredibly, incredibly easy to understand. Roger that. So why so many programmers avoid SQL or they just don't know SQL? The answer is ORMs. This is basically a thing that takes my favorite code, for example, Python code, and turns it into SQL. So I write code on Python and I get SQL. ORMs are used really, really often. For example, on Python, I have the Django ORM. On Laravel, we have Eloquent ORM. Or Node.js, we have Sequelize or Type ORM. These are all super, super good products and they save time. The problem is that they make the developers depend on the ORM because the developer doesn't want to switch between Python and SQL, PHP and SQL. It would be better if I could just stay 
only on Python and get SQL via my ORM. Now, this is good because this saves time. The problem is that people become dependent on the ORM and if something breaks, if they need something faster, if the ORM is not big enough, then they don't know what to do. Now, this is why every serious full stack developer should learn SQL because eventually the ORM might not be enough. Now, I'm not saying stop using ORMs. I use ORMs all the time. I don't write SQL code every day, but when something breaks, when the ORM is kind of slow, when there is something I need to do, but I can't do it with the ORM, I go in and I write raw SQL code and that will be always so much better than not knowing what to do and trying to work around the issues. Keep in mind, I'm not saying that you should become an SQL expert. I'm just saying you should understand at least how SQL works. So at least you understand what is your ORM doing for you. This will help you understand how databases work. It will help you model your data. If you just learn a little bit of SQL, it will go a long, long way. You are going to see the benefits way, way into the future. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you are now a little bit more curious about SQL. Like I said, you don't have to be an expert. You just need to understand how it works. But I promise you the effort of learning it right now is going to pay in the long term. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your comments. We're almost there in 100K. As always, don't forget to be happy. Be warm on the winter. Kamsamnida. Saran heyo. Don't forget to eat kimchi. Bye-bye.